All right, stat students. So we're continuing with our um, hypothesis testing unit today. And uh, yes, or the last lesson we had, we were setting up hypotheses. But today we're going to uh, start the process and think about the reasoning behind the test that we're going to be conducting. OK, so um, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so uh, let's go back to this example of basketball shooting. OK, so we're going to set up another experiment here and we're going to say, OK, we have a basketball player and they make the claim. Last lesson, we had practiced setting up these null and alternative hypotheses. Hold up, my camera's not working. So. One second, let me try to get this to work. All right, there we go, sorry. Uh, so you, the last lesson, we worked on setting up null and alternative hypotheses. And we are going to um, use sort of the same simulator to help us uh, cr create uh, this significance test. So we're gonna say a basketball shooter thinks that they are an 80% shooter. Okay, so here is our null hypothesis, the claim, right? Now, we suspect that they are lower than that. So we, we've already set up this hypothesis before, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and suspect, okay, they shoot less than 0.8. And this is what we're gonna end up doing for this. We're gonna take a simple random sample of 30 shots. Now, you assume that shots are independent in basketball. Uh, one outcome does not affect the next. And these are a random sample in the infinite number of shots that they could end up taking in their careers, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and, um, and pull up the simulation. Oh, that's the Microsoft Store, sorry. Uh, pull up the simulation and we're gonna go ahead and use this again and we're going to sort of re -go, go back through this idea, uh, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot. 30 shots for this player. And so far they're not doing too great. They're, they're kind of way lower than the mark that we're seeing here. A few more shots left. All right, so they did very poorly compared to what they said. So right here we have our sample statistic. Uh, this is proportion. So just like the last couple of chapters, we've talked about X bar or P hat. Uh, so we have uh, P hat is equal to what did what did we get? We got 0.27. Okay. Fine. So <clears throat> next, I want to. Uh, set up another one and that we're going to talk about two scenarios. So this is going to be shooter one So let me let me write that on here and I actually I want you to write that this you know shooter one And then we're going to have shooter two Okay, and we're going to set up the exact same scenario here We are going to uh, anticipate that he he's going to make the claim that it's going to be um, that it's gonna, he's gonna shoot 80% and we're gonna say, okay, it's less than that actually. All right, so let's go ahead and look at shooter number two and we'll have, uh, we'll have him go ahead and shoot 30 shots. This is the next shooter. Here we go, 30 shots and let's see how, how he does. Okay, he's doing a lot better, but hmm, still not looking too good as far as getting to that 80%. All right, he's climbing now. Seven, going back down. Okay, so 67% him. So P hat equals 0.67. Okay, so we have both of these people, right, that, uh, that we're trying to decide, is there evidence against their claim? Okay, that's what we have to decide. Now, uh, for, for you all, watching this and looking at it, you would probably say yes, right? Uh, but I would say it's not so simple for shooter two. For shooter one, I would say 
Yeah, he really did not give himself any kind of support on his claim up here. This 0.27 uh, is something we would consider that to be to be pretty poor, right? So let's talk about the reasoning behind significance tests. Okay, reasoning behind significance tests. So. Significance tests are based around the uh, around normal distributions, and we say 68, 95, 99.7. Uh, that 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 idea there. Okay, so let's uh, let's do this in your notes next to where we've written this reasoning behind significance tests. Uh, let's apply. Let's create. A normal curve right because uh, for this distribution if we want to assess normality of this uh, and, and we would do the large counts condition that we've talked about in since chapter 7 n times P greater than or equal to 10 uh, or and n times 1 minus P greater than or equal to 10 think that we might have some issues with this right one here so maybe I should have done some more shots so this may not be uh, exactly normal like we want to think that's gonna be 0.2 times 30 yeah that's six so probably should have done some more shots but let's assume that we did this and it, and it ended up being normal okay just for example's sake that kind of blew up in my face there but let's assume that these people when they shoot their their shots it's going to make a sampling distribution that's approximately normal okay so we get uh, we're gonna say okay let's assume that they are true and that their their mean shots are 0 0.8 right okay well if we use our standard deviation formula for um, for these sampling distributions assuming that all the right conditions are met We'd have P times one minus P over N. And we'll, we'll go ahead and get that calculated. Okay, so <clears throat> I've already gone ahead and set this up. So we found the sampling or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So you can write that. We have this, we're imagining this turning into a sampling distribution for both of these shooters, okay? They're both saying that they are 80% shooters, which is going to be the mean of this sampling distribution. Remember, our symbol for that is mu of p, uh, mu of p hat, right, is equal to the true mean. So we're giving them the benefit of the doubt because that's their claim. We're going to trust that unless we can say otherwise, okay? So we have these two, we have these uh, claims here. Sorry, this is p hat. Uh, we have their, what actually happened, the data. And I want to talk about that. So for shooter two, I'm going to actually have shooter two be green and shooter one be red. Okay. And we're going to draw some lines in here. So for shooter, uh, for shooter two, their percent was 0.67, which is here. Okay. So I'm going to say uh, S2, right? Shooter two. And then where was shooter one? Where does their percent lie? Well, probably way over here in uh, in Timbuktu, right? Like way over here. Okay, not even close to uh, something that is imaginable, right? So this is shooter one. So this is really the basic reasoning behind these significance tests in these chapters, right? How reasonable is it for this to occur in all the trials. So basically for shooter two, are we gonna show grace to that shooter? Because look how many, uh, look how close it is to the actual mean, right? Now you would say, okay, we're saying how many deviations? Well, two deviations below the mean, but could that have happened randomly, right? That's what we're trying to, to say, okay? Let's, uh, let's, let's write down a uh, note for this. So we're going to put down uh, we're going to write down this note here. Okay. Could the outcome have happened by random chance 
Okay. So that's what we're saying. Could so looking at the green line, could that have happened in random chance? Well, 95% of the data is going to happen in between two deviations, right? So from a statistical standpoint, it is possible that this shooter could be an 80% shooter still. This is just one of those occurrences where it's below, right? So I would say that we don't really have evidence against the green line here. However, the, uh, the possibility that the red line happens is almost impossible, okay? Okay, could this have happened by chance? Uh, so for shooter one, for shooter one, this is very, or I'll say extremely unlikely to have happened if we are to believe that he shoots 80%, okay, for shooter one, right? It's just, it's unreasonable, right? Uh, some day, sometimes you have bad days, sometimes you have good days, right? Uh, it's more than just a bad day for this red line. He is so far below what should be happening that it, it just statistically can't be possible, right? So we, we call that statistical significance right there, okay? Uh, so we'll write that down in a second. For shooter two, since the statistic falls within two deviations of the mean of the sampling distribution. It is possible that he could be a an eighty percent shooter. Okay, so it's this idea of we didn't have enough evidence against the green line. We have very strong evidence against the red line, okay? And we call this statistically significant, right? Statistical significance, and I believe we've defined that before, uh, but that's when an event is so unlikely to happen uh, by just chance, okay? The green line could have happened by chance, the red line, absolutely not. It's just not gonna work. There's, there's just no probability, okay? It's just not gonna happen. So we're gonna introduce a concept called the p-value. It's gonna be very important for this chapter, a p-value. And in my next video, we are going to talk about how to calculate it. I'll have to do two separate videos, one for AP, one for dual credit for this. And uh, so we're going to write down a definition for p-value. You can actually draw a line in your notes, uh, and we're going to say p-values. Okay, so a, uh, a p-value, let me uh, pull this definition over. Okay, so a p-value is the probability computing, uh, computed assuming HO is true that the statistic would take on a value as extreme or more extreme than the one actually observed. Okay, so let me highlight that. That's going to be our definition for this. So I'm going to pause and let you guys write that. Actually, wait, I'm going to, we need to write this as well. Small p values are evidence against HO because it says it's unlikely. And then large p values fail to give convincing evidence. Okay. So we're going to write all of these bullet points down here. All right, now I'm going to pause it. Okay, so if we go back here and we're talking about this idea of p-values, p-values are probabilities. It's the probability that green line would occur, right? Well, what is that probability? Well, we are able to calculate normal probabilities. That's what we did in chapter seven. And we could figure out what's the probability that you would get a value right there where that green line is, okay? And we can also calculate a probability that you'll get a value where that red line is, right? And we know that the p-value for shooter one is going to be very small. The, the uh, p-value for shooter two might be kind of small, right? But, but 
uh, we, uh, you know, is it too, like, is it small enough or is it big enough to be okay, right? That's the, uh, that's the golden question for this chapter, okay? Small p-values are evidence against HO. Large p-values give convi convincing evidence, fail to give convincing evidence, okay? So we, we don't really have much evidence against the, uh, the second shooter. I mean, he was below, but we can't, we don't have enough information to, uh, what we say, reject, okay? All right, so <clears throat> once we get our p-values calculated, which we're going to do that for this scenario later, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is called, or what we're going to talk about is drawing conclusions, okay? You always do that in your hypothesis test. You're going to draw a conclusion. So we have two options here. Okay, so we're going to, I want you to write this. We're going to say the final step in performing a significance test is to draw a conclusion about the competing claims you're testing. All right, these are the two options for you when we're, when we, when you, at the end of the day, when we go to make our statement, make our claim about these shooters, we're either going to reject HO or we're going to fail to reject HO, okay? Uh, <clears throat> this is gonna be an important note here, so we're gonna be writing quite a bit. Uh, a fail to reject HO decision, so for instance, we are very likely not going to be able to reject the green shooter. Does that mean we accept the fact that he's an 80% shooter? No, okay? So that's not how this works. Just because we can't prove that it's wrong doesn't mean that they are, you know, that it's that they are actually what they say they are. We just weren't able to collect the proper evidence for it, and we have to go back and recreate uh, our test, redesign our experiment. Okay, uh, so it says it doesn't mean that HO is true. For that reason, you should never accept HO. That's never going to be something that we do, uh, and you'll see that quite a bit in uh, in our problem set and what we'll be using. Um, we're never going to accept HO or use language implying that you believe HO is true. That's not the case. Remember, we're always seeking evidence against it, but we're never going to accept that it's true. Um, so that's, uh, that's important, okay? We're just gonna write down these bottom notes here. P value small, reject HO. And uh, there's convincing evidence for HA. If the p-value is large, you fail to reject HO, not, uh, not convincing evidence for HA. So I'm going to pause and make sure that you've got everything written. I don't know if I've already paused yet. I don't think so. But pause, make sure that you've got all this written. So my college professor um, at MTSU, this is my junior year, uh, 2012, fall of 2012, uh, came, he had this quote. He said, if the p-value is low, the ho must go. Okay. All right. Uh, another way that uh, Miss Flannery, one of our admin, she used to teach stats. If the p value is low, I like this one. Project that ho. Okay. Now, I'm not usually going to call it the ho, okay? I mean, it's it's HO is what I'm gonna say, or uh, null hypothesis. I know some people, I know there's a student in my class that's in dual enrollment stats right now, and the professor just calls it the null hypothesis, okay? But if you ever take a stats class in college, this is always something that's, you know, they always try to make fun about. But uh, this is a pretty useful statement. When we start getting p-values and calculating them, like actually calculating them, um, these statements will come in handy because that's what you're doing. You're looking at the p-value and um, and deciding, you know, do I need to reject the null hypothesis? Okay. So here's the here's the question: How low? How low is too low? Like if we compare, Right, like this green line is, it looks like the probability, it's its right on the edge, right? It's its sort of in this middle ground of, it looks like we could reject it, but as your stats teacher, I'm telling you, we should not reject this here. So how do, how do I know that? Like what is telling me that um, that idea? Well, it's based on normality, right? 
It's based on the nor normal curve here. And we said that an, an event would be considered unusual if it's outside of two deviations, right? Uh, so we, we're talking about the middle 90% here would be considered like a normal occurrence. But anything outside of that would be sort of abnormal, right? And so what, I'm, what I want to talk about is I want to talk about outside of two deviations. Okay, we have these little we have these little areas here. And combined, what is the total area outside of there? Well, this is 2.5% and this is 2.5%. Combined, that would be 5% total. Okay? And what what we call that, and sometimes this changes, but we're gonna say lower. Let me let me type this. Lower than, and I need to draw it now. Than what's called alpha. Okay, so alpha. We saw alpha for those uh, in dual credit. Um, you had that symbol, right? The Z sub, don't write this, but Z sub alpha over two or P sub alpha over two. And I believe that I said I was gonna explain where that comes from. That's actually showing up right here, okay? If we called this alpha, right, which is 0 0.05, if we divide that by two, alpha over two, right, is 2.5%, which is what we have here. Okay, so that's really what that's talking about. And so there is a connection between this unit, absolutely this unit, and the confidence intervals that we just had. Uh, so we will make that connection later on. So lower than alpha. Alpha is called, alpha is the significance level. Alpha is what's called your significance level. Significance level is one minus your confidence level. More of just a side note. I'm gonna even put all of this in like a bracket. That's not like, you don't have to really just think about that too much. Uh, it will come up later but it's not, it's just to maybe make a connection between this chapter and last. If you're thinking confidence level from last chapter, significance level is essentially the complement. So on here, if I was 95% confident, I would be talking about two deviations. Everything outside of that would be alpha, right? Your significance level, okay? So that's, that's really the idea here, okay? So let's look at this slide here. Um, <clears throat> this will be, I think this is where I'm gonna end it today after we, after we write this. But here's the idea. There is no rule for how small a p-value uh, we should require, uh, which we haven't even calculated p-value yet, but we, we have at least a bearing for, okay, the red one was very unlikely, right? The, the probability that the red one happens has to be tiny, right? And then the green one, which we'll calculate probably in the next video, is, um, the green one is more likely to happen, but is it is it higher than this significance level? Well, since it's falling here and not in the blue areas, it probably will be if we're saying our alpha is 0.05. But what this slide is saying, there's no rule for how small a p-value we should require in order to reject HO, but we can compare the p-value with a fixed value that we, we regard as decisive uh, called the significance level. So I've already described that, okay? And we write that as alpha, which I've described, okay? So here's the note that we want. So if the p-value is smaller than alpha, we say that the data are statistically significant at level alpha, okay? We're gonna say in that case, we reject HO and conclude that there is uh, convincing evidence in favor of the alternate hypothesis, okay? Uh, we, we don't have to write that actually. Let's get rid of that. 
that'll be fine because we kind of write that down below. We we summarize that. The, this is an important part. This is very similar to what we wrote on the last slide, obviously. Okay, p value small, large, but this is more precise. Now we have this bearing for okay, how large do I need it to be? How small do I need it to be? And, and that's uh, that's what we need. We needed some sort of system for doing that. Okay, so uh, I'm going to pause and let you write this. All right, so hopefully, uh, last video, I feel like, you know, I didn't really tie things together too well, but hopefully now things are becoming a little bit clearer as far as, as what's going on. Uh, like I said, this is one of the most important chapters, and really the whole class has been leading up to this moment, and uh, this is very foundational for future research methods classes that you may take in college. Uh, very, very important chapter, very, very important content for uh, just for you to grow as a statistician and to understand really the essence of what statistics is. We are using data to sort of argue points here, right? Like these, these basketball shooters are arguing that they are 80% shooters and they have to go prove it, right? Now, instead of just saying, oh, it was a bad day or oh, just crummy luck or whatever, we're using numbers to say, well, sorry, it wasn't unluck. You're really just wrong. Or, well, okay, today you're not low enough to be wrong, so we don't know yet. Like we're using numbers and math to uh, make these choices. This goes beyond like sports. Obviously, we, you know, um, this happens in all the medical fields when they're trying to show significance for like new medications, vaccines that have been coming out. So it's actually pretty exciting. Uh, to learn about this stuff and how they make these choices and maybe one day you'll get to use these concepts and this is like the first step for it so uh, all right if you have any questions let me know uh, we'll see you in the next video